Well, I procrastinated for eight months. I should have made this video a while back, but I completely forgot about the idea. I came across this script slash outline that I wrote back in 2013, but I haven't gotten around to making it into a video. But anyways, hello Cartoon Network fans on YouTube, or hey if you randomly just clicked this video. This video of course will be a recap summarizing, analyzing, and discussing the ups and downs, lefts and rights, just kidding, and key events that Cartoon Network had last year, 2013. Your guide in this trip, through Cartoon Network's 2013, will be myself, Monsters Review. I want you to be as entertained as possible, so sit back, relax, do whatever is keeping you occupied, and enjoy the show. Let's start this video with some of the events that happened in the beginning of the year, so this video is actually going to go chronologically. On January 3rd, 2013, the third and final season of Generator Rex concluded with the second part of the series finale entitled End Game. Season 3 of Generator Rex consisted of 19 episodes, all airing from November 2011 until January 2013, except for two episodes called Enemies Mine and Hermanos. I'm honestly not sure if it was cancelled, if Cartoon Network didn't renew it, or if it had a proper ending. The third season also contained a crossover special called Heroes United with Ben 10, which was Ben 10 Ultimate Alien at the time. Over the 2010-2013 run of the series, it got a single volume DVD that was also featured on the Cartoon Network Hall of Fame action DVD, a multi-platform video game, a Maytel toy line, a few comics, and a primetime Emmy for Outstanding Individual and in Animation. Still on the Heroes topic, on January 5th, 2013, after a long hiatus, the DC Nation block returned with Young Justice and Green Lantern the Animated Series. There was some controversy back in October 2012, shortly after DC Nation had returned in the fall. Cartoon Network made scheduling changes to air shows that celebrated the 20th anniversary in place of The Block, according to a producer from Green Lantern the Animated Series. These changes caused DC Nation to not air during the celebration, but also caused The Block to go into a long hiatus. Shortly after, there was an online petition about the controversy that reached over 10,000 signatures, and in fact, some of the episodes that were supposed to air were released onto iTunes and Amazon shortly after. There was a poll on the DC Nation Facebook page asking fans who their favorite supervillain was, and several fans suggested Cartoon Network to be a choice. Then in March 2013, Young Justice and Green Lantern the Animated Series ended, nearly two weeks after the one-year anniversary of their premieres. I thought that this whole situation was bad. I've never seen an action show struggle this bad. And it was just a big... It just escalated really quickly into this big mess, and it sucks to see such great shows end up like that. Cartoon Network made a deal with Netflix, making select shows from Cartoon Network and Adult Swim available on Netflix earlier in 2013. It was mostly some original programming with some acquired programming for Cartoon Network. For Adult Swim, it was some original programming and most of the acquired programming, basically Family Guy, American Dad, Cleveland Brown Show, etc., was already on there from Fox. A few months ago, Cartoon Network and other ratings analysis accused Netflix for being Cartoon Network's loss in viewers. This may be true, but it's most likely because currently Cartoon Network lacks variety. People that have Netflix can choose what they want to watch from a big selection of shows, most being shows that no longer air. I love the availability of Cartoon Network shows on Netflix, although I don't really use Netflix too often. But the problem with it is, is that of these shows that normally span for several seasons, there's only like one season available for each show. As for Cartoon Network accusing them of, of being their loss in viewers, that's probably true. And again, as I said previously, most of the shows that they have on Netflix are ones that no longer air. What if Cartoon Network just aired those, or they made a big variety schedule, and that would solve their problem? The third annual Hall of Game Awards aired on February 11, 2013. It was hosted by Shaquille O'Neal and Nick Cannon. For those of you that don't know, the Hall of Game Awards is an award show that happens every year on Cartoon Network. This award show gathers celebrities and athletes in the same room, as awards are presented for categories such as Most Awesome Mascot, Altitude, and Amped Up Anthem. In my opinion, I think it's just there to compete with the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards. I don't think it should be there because even to get more viewers, they have to get actors from Disney Channel and Nickelodeon to be on there. When I saw it, it looked really unorganized, and it looked like the athletes had no idea what they were doing. And of course, we also had those usual corny award show jokes. I really don't like the Hall of Game Awards, and I feel like it should cease to exist. Still on the topic of Cartoon Network's live action stuff, Nick Cannon's Incredible Crew premiered on the one-year anniversary of Level Up, January 24th. Level Up ended that February, and Incredible Crew was cancelled that summer. 
I don't get why Cartoon Network still tries to do live action stuff occasionally. Uh, they haven't really done anything too much since Incredible Crew ended, and I just hope that there's no live action stuff anymore on Cartoon Network. Teen Titans Go! premiered this April. The namesake is from the Teen Titans comic book series. It's a flash animated comedic take on the legendary supergroup. All of the voice actors from the original Teen Titans reprised their roles on this show, and there's a new theme song by the one and only Puffy Amiumi. The character design is different and it's based on comedy unlike its predecessor. I don't really see how most of it's comedy when most of it's just eating pizza and playing video games and destroying things. Which apparently little kids find funny, but I don't think it is. I definitely like the original Teen Titans more than this. Also added to DC Nation, a new CGI version of Batman entitled Beware the Batman premiered in July. I saw the first episode and liked it, saw a part of the second episode and didn't like it too much and I haven't seen it since. It was put on a hiatus in October, although the voice actor that plays Batman, Anthony Ruviar, confirmed it was coming back in January, which it did not. It rather returned in May as a part of Toonami's schedule and the remaining episodes aired on there. It possibly just went on hiatus like Young Justice and Green Lantern the Animated Series. Action shows have been seeming to have a lot of trouble recently. On May 20th, Cartoon Network added a new style to some of its bumpers and promos. This new look features GIF-style animations of characters, neon colors and bright colors, and electronic music. Many people thought this was the start of a new era, but the Check It era is still here. As usual, these bumpers are repetitive and not really that appealing, so I can't wait for a new era to start. Some pilots were released over the internet that were for Cartoon Network. These pilots were Steven Universe, Mars Safari, Lakewood Plaza Turbo, Paranormal Roommates, Clarence, and My Science Fiction Project. I saw all these pilots on YouTube, and I enjoyed, for the most part, Mars Safari, Lakewood Plaza Turbo, and My Science Fiction Project. Clarence was also pretty good. And out of those, Clarence and Steven Universe were the only ones that actually became a show, so... I think the most deserving to become a show out of those pilots is definitely Lakewood Plaza Turbo. During 2013, Cartoon Network changed Cartoon Planet so much. It started from Friday nights, then Fridays and Thursdays, to Sundays and Saturdays, and then from weekdays to 2pm to 3pm. I don't know why they would air them at that time because everyone's busy at that point in the day. Also, it ended at the end of 2013. The programming also changed. They started to add in Problem Solvers and Secret Mono Fort Awesome, then they added in Sidekick and Scaredy Squirrel, then they added in Mad and Annoying Orange. The block was initially intended to air classic Cartoon Network shows, and it's hosted by Brack and Zorak from Space Ghost. I'm sure over 90% of the people that watched Annoying Orange and Mad had never even heard of these characters before from the block. For the year of 2012, it was fine, but everything changed in 2013. I don't know why they're making these changes, and I feel like this is another reason to believe that Cartoon Network really doesn't like its old classic shows. An acquired show from Canada called Garage Band premiered in 2013. It's from the creators of Total Drama, and hence the name it's based on a garage band. It was put on hiatus, then ended this March. I saw the show, and I really didn't like it too much. Uh, it's not really the same as Total Drama, by any means, and a lot of its humor is based off of stereotypes, which is kind of like Total Drama. For example, they always have the fat dude, and they always make fat jokes, and then they also have the nerd, and they always make nerd jokes, then they have the stereotypical obnoxious teen daughter, etc. A new blog called Pizza Night with Pizza Steve started airing on Friday nights. It's hosted by Pizza Steve and Mr. Gus from Uncle Grandpa. The block airs reruns of the currently airing shows, Adventure Time, Regular Show, Gumball, etc., and the bumpers are about 5-20 to 20 seconds each, and they air before and after each commercial break. I don't think that this can be comparable to Fridays at all. For the most part, it's not that great, and the bumpers are way too short to even have appeal to them. Also, the Monday premiere night that premiered was called New at 7. It features the same neon colors and some of the same style from the new art and such. I don't really like this, and again, I feel like they're trying to use this name as an appeal to a newer generation. Mad had its 100th episode on November 11th, but the series ended on December 2nd. Annoying Orange also ended two days later on December 4th. 
I'm definitely not going to miss Annoying Orange. And although some episodes of Mad were funny, it was clogging up the Cartoon Network schedule, and there was also a lot of episodes that weren't really that funny. Now it's time for our rapid fire round where we're going to quickly talk about topics. The questions will feature things we didn't mention previously and feature things for Cartoon Network. I'm ready. <laughs> Adult Swim. Bob Burgers joined the lineup, Rick and Morty in several shows premiered, and I just think Adult Swim is doing pretty good right now, and they should keep doing what they're doing. <laughs> Toonami. I think they have a good lineup at the moment, hopefully it doesn't change anytime soon, and I pretty much watch it every Saturday night, for as long as I can. Boomerang, I don't really like the new current lineup, and I would definitely change it a lot by adding in a bunch of uh, older Hanna-Barbera cartoons and definitely add more variety to the schedule. Lego Legends of Shima, Beyblade Shogun Steel, and Tenkai Knights premiered this year. I don't really like those shows, but I guess people are entitled to their own opinions about them. Totally Spy Season 6 started airing in France and in the UK, but it hasn't came to the US yet. It was supposed to be on Cartoon Network. I have no idea why it's not airing over here, and I just really hope it does, because it's a good show. During the later part of 2013, Cartoon Network was allowing Adventure Time and regular show to air in the King of the Hill 8 o'clock time slot. I think they should have kept doing that, and definitely Adult Swim shouldn't be starting at 8 o'clock at night. Okay, well that was a heck of time. Make sure you leave a like below if you enjoyed this video, we truly do appreciate it if you've made it this far on the video. Also, some comment questions are, what was your favorite Cartoon Network event of 2013? And did you get any Cartoon Network merchandise or DVDs for Christmas slash Hanukkah slash Kwanzaa, whatever holiday you celebrate? Also, please don't get discriminatory in the comments. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion and you should respect that. Thanks for watching and have a spectacular day.